special dimensions here. I'll just keep it very simple uh, without uh, yeah, just focusing on the waterfall itself. So the third first thing I'm, I'm going to do is create a list called count. It has a top level of total, and I'm just going to create here the items plus zero to plus 11. And on my codes, I'm just going to make my life a little bit easier by putting the number uh, of the count as a code here as well. And of course, we're going to need a properties module for this count list. So now we have the counts here. Just turn the sums off as a number. And so the starting point, uh, one of them being, um, I'm just going to call waterfall calculation, uh, module number one. I want my new client's input. So here we will say how many clients we expect to to acquire in a specific month. So let's say we start off with 100 in January, 100 in February, 100 in March. And the next thing would be then the attrition curve. And here I'm going to use my count list. I'm going to format this as a percentage as we're talking about attrition. And here you would input whatever the, the business might define as the attrition curve. So let's say month zero is 100%, month one, 80% of those 100 that started on the first month, then second month, 75% remain, third month, 70% remain, and so forth. I'm going to turn the sums off as well. This number is not very relevant. There we go. So now we have new clients and we have an attrition curve. And the next step then is the waterfall calculation in itself. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to split it into three line items so we can really understand what, what will happen here. So the first one will be the attrition curve. The second one will be, uh, let's say the first one is the new hire, second one attrition curve. And then final result being the last one. And I'm going to bring in my count dimension into here. Let me flip this around. So I'm going to bring in the attrition here as it is on the count dimension, just a direct pull from the attrition input. Just from that, this is a percentage as well. And the new hires, what we want to do is that we bring them offset by the count. So my formula for the new hires would be an offset. And I'm going to pick the new clients. And the criteria for my offset will be minus the count property, which is the code uh, of, the, of the count item itself. So now I'm bringing in the new hires, and I'm bringing them in this diagonal format. So this means that the 100 people from January that started on count zero, on February, they are count one, and on March, they are count two. In April, they are count three. So this number for January is coming across in this diagonal line. This is the same for February and the same for March. And we have the attrition curves here also on a diagonal basis, if you see. So uh, January starts with 100%. When January becomes plus one, only 80% remain. When January becomes plus two, only 75% remain. So that's about all we need to do. So we can multiply the new hires with the attrition curve. 
And so now we have the new clients in this diagonal line. So we know this result here on the bottom is really how many active clients you have as a result of, of this exercise. So here you see in January, you have those 100 new clients and February, you have the 100 new clients from February plus the 80 that remain from January. Then in March, we have another 100 from, from starting in March, 80 that remain from February and 75 that remain from January. And this goes onwards uh, in this diagonal line forming the waterfall itself. And uh, what you would bring then back to your forecasting model might be the number of active clients at the end of each month, which is basically this amount right here.